India's number one podcast built for international audiences. This is the highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. It's TRS Clips. Enjoy the video. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. As you are going forward in your own journey, and here I'm just talking to you, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay, just you as mm-hmm. the human being as well, right? Is your meditation getting deeper? Mm-hmm. Is your spiritual journey getting deeper? Mm-hmm. Are you having deeper experiences during your meditations? Mm-hmm. That's all. That's the question. Yeah. The one thing that I always say is nothing happens with time. Nothing ever changes and deepens just with time. Everything that you want in your life, you have to make it happen. Good relationships don't happen. You have to make them happen. Happiness doesn't happen. You have to make it happen. Success doesn't happen. You have to make it happen. Depth in your meditation, depth in your spirituality doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. And when we say make it happen, it's always work in progress. What is depth in your meditation? This is something I wouldn't have understood when I began my meditation journey. Mm. Now I understand, but mm. I'd love for you to explain it in your own way to the listeners. Mm-hmm. There is a concept of depth in meditation or yes, prayer. Yes, yes. Depth in meditation... I I look at it in many different ways. Okay. One way is depth in meditation doesn't mean that my mind doesn't deviate when I meditate. Depth in my meditation means how much can I pull my mind back to get back in. That how, to me is depth. How easily and often? How easily and often can I pull it back to come back in? That's depth to me. Because in meditation you're either focusing on breath or a mantra or a yes, chant. Yes. Yes. That's your point of focus. Your brain will run away. Pull it back. How much do you get back in again? Yeah. Is depth. That's the bicep curl of your brain. That's the bicep curl of your brain, of okay. your mind. The second aspect of depth in my meditation to me is entering into a very sacred space. In your head. In my heart, head. In my internal space, I would rather call it. Mm. Entering into a very sacred space internally. A sacred space which is, which is aloof to everything that's happening in the outside world to me. Right. There's so much that's happening. There's ups and downs and successes and failures and love and hate and honor and dishonor. And so much is going on in the outside world. To enter into that sacred space means to be aloof from that. So the more I get to do that, even if it's for a split second, remember Anvir, that split second of entering into that sacred space is like thousands of years of being there. Here a split second is a split second. In that space a split second is a generation, is a century, is a millennium. It's a spiritual space. Right. Even that little moment of entering into that space where I'm just completely away from everything that's going on around me in my life, to me is depth. The third thing of depth in my meditation to me is, because I practice Bhakti Yoga and uh, obviously for me Krishna is my focus of meditation, Krishna is my focus of connection. To me, entering into that sacred space means how am I making my relationship with the object of my meditation stronger? Like when you focus on your breath, when breath is the object of your meditation, there's no relationship. When a light is the focus of your meditation, that no, there's no relationship. But when this person is your object of meditation, there's a relationship. So for me, entering into that sacred space means how am I strengthening my relationship with the object of my meditation? And strengthening that relationship means that I'm willing to make the required adjustments and compromises to make that relationship deeper. It's like any other relationship. If a guy is in a relationship with a girl, both sides have to make certain adjustments to make the relationship very deep, right? So entering in that sacred space, getting into that depth is how can I make those required adjustments in my lifestyle and my work and whatever I do 
to make that relationship stronger. So there is a, I had said this the last time I remember this, this part I do remember <laughs> from the podcast we did last time. I recollect saying this, that to me, meditation is not just that one, one and a half hour that I sit. To me, meditation is my 24 hours of my living my life and my day. Because the way I l deal with things in the 22 hours is the two hours how my meditation will be, you know? You know, lots of people use this exact phrase mm -hmm. as an excuse to not focus on the two hours. Though. No, that's, that's not what I mean. Mm. But I do know that without living those 22 hours right, those two hours are not going to be in place. Yeah. Right. And if I if I'm right in those two hours, my 22 hours are all, the, it's a loop. Yeah. It's a loop. The 22 hours feed into the two and the two hours feed into the 22. And it's like a cyclical loop. Mm. And the more we consciously and, and in awareness live like that, I think we do get deeper into our states of meditation. Have you noticed you need lesser sleep because of this process? I mean, I'll be honest, I have barely slept over the last several, like what, from 26 years now in the ashram, in the monastery, 27. And I usually sleep for anywhere between three and a half, four hours, four and a half hours. Uh, I don't think meditation, meditation, sleep are connected. Undoubtedly, you can feel refreshed even in a yeah. shorter span of sleep because it's deeper. Uh, I also know that because I travel a lot. There's a lot of physical stress. Mm. The body is handling, a body is a machine. Your mind is a machine. And uh, I do feel that we all need requisite amount of sleep in terms of the number of hours as well for the body to recuperate. The, body, the mind might probably be fine. You know, you can function normally. But there's a certain stress that the body is holding. Mm. Correct? Mm. And uh, uh, though meditation and that state are connected, I still do recommend that we should not kind of say that because I meditate, I can do with less number of hours of sleep. That's not probably the best way to do it, though it could happen like that. Mm. And it does happen like that. Mm. Right? But I do feel it's worthwhile to give the body what it needs yeah. so that the mind is strong. And in fact, when the body and the mind are rested, entering in that sacred space becomes so much easier. Vis-a-vis mm. -vis when your mind and body are not rested, you're just struggling to keep your mind there. You probably go to sleep in the middle you of your meditation. You pop your head and go to sleep. Yes, mm. absolutely. I think here's also where we need to highlight depth of meditation again. The deeper it goes, the more the rest you feel during the meditation. Yes, 100%. And absolutely. therefore, the lesser your sleep quota becomes. But yeah. then, how do you explain depth of meditation to people who are studying sleep as a science? You know, Correct. Until they experience it themselves. Right. And until the West decides to experiment upon people like yourself. And right. actually test your brains while you're sleeping, while you're meditating. Yeah, I think they did do that. There was, who was it? I can't remember. Recently, I read an article about one, a monk from ne one of the monasteries, Buddhist monk from one monastery in Nepal, if I'm not wrong. Mm. He came when scientists, you know, uh, connected all kinds of equipment and instruments to his brain to measure and get metrics on the state of his mind and the mm. state of his, how his brain functions in terms of all the alpha, beta, gamma mm. waves. And uh, and he the, all he had to do is get into that deep state of meditation. And they did have a lot of data to prove that what you would get to 10 hours of sleep in 20 minutes or 15 minutes of meditation gives them the same thing. Yeah. So there is data, but it's not enough to, today to be able to say that, okay, this is how it works. If you enjoyed this video, just know that this entire channel is full of playlists that will take you down different pathways of learning. All sorts of subjects, all sorts of genres, all sorts of guests, but the one commonality, lots of knowledge. Enjoy TRS Clips.